This is the Ninja Legion. I'm Spider, and welcome to Saving Throw, uh, our show here about tabletop gaming. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the newest Magic the Gathering set, Fate Reforged. Uh, the pre-release was over the uh, this past weekend. I had an opportunity to go and play. Uh, so I want to talk about my experience there and also some of the highlight cards that are coming out in the new set uh, when it's released on Friday. Um, first of all, Fate Reforged is part two of the Cons of Tarkir block. Uh, the first set was Cons of Tarkir, and then the set after this is going to be called Dragons of Tarkir. Uh, and this is um, Wizards of the Coast introduction or transition into the new block style that Magic the Gathering is going to be doing. Um, whereas before they would do um, three set blocks, a core set, and then another three set block, and then do rotation of the previous three set block when the third one would come out. So you'd have three set block, core set, three set block, core set, and then when the next one started, the first one would rotate out. Uh, now they're going to do them in twos instead. So you'll have large set, small set, large set, small set, uh, no more core sets, and then when the the next set comes out, it'll push the previous one out. Um, so, Cons of Tarkir was a large set. Fate Reforged is a small set that is going to work with some of the mechanics from Cons of Tarkir. And then when Dragons of Tarkir comes out, uh, Fate Reforged is going to stay with that for the purposes of limited. Uh, and so you'll have one large set and one small set, which will be what the traditional style or what the the new style is going to be for Magic for their limited and for their block structure. Um, so Fate Reforge is in an interesting position because it is a small set that accompanies both two different large sets with different themes and different elements. Um, so the, the storyline-wise, uh, Khans of Tarkir is a world where all the dragons have been killed off and there's five warring clans um, uh, that are living on this planet. It's Obzon, Teemer, Mardu, Jeskai, and Sultai. And those each take up one of the three wedges, uh, the color, what they refer to as color wedges, where it's a color and it's two opposing colors on the five color wheel for magic. Uh, Abzan is green, white, black. Mardu is red, white, black. Sultai is green, blue, black. Uh, Abzan is America, so red, white, and blue. Or Jeskai is America, red, white, and blue. And Teemer is uh, red, blue, and green. Um, they each have their own mechanics. It's focused on that. And then there is a overall set mechanic. Uh, it's called Manifest for Fate Reforged. And what Manifest is, you take the top card of your library. Uh, you put it face down in front of you as a 2-2 creature. Uh, if it is, in fact, a creature card, um, you can pay its mana cost to flip it face up as you would a morph creature. Um, but if it's anything other than that, it's just stuck as a 2-2 creature. So if you get an instant, a sorcery, an enchantment, planeswalker, or land, you just get a 2-2 creature. And there's lots of cards that put these manifest creatures into play. Um, some of them are really cool. They, they act as an enchantment and give them a special ability, um, which will stay on the creature if you can flip it face up as a creature. Other times you're just getting value because you're today taking like a land and making it into a creature if you already have enough land. Not, not too bad of an exchange. Um, so first of all, I want to talk about my experience at the pre-release. Uh, I went to our local game store, Critical Hit Games, and played in one of their pre-releases. Uh, it was a sealed deck format. Um, for this, you got to pick which one of the five clans you wanted to be, uh, to use. Uh, I picked Mardu um, because I'm thinking about building a tiny leader's deck, um, which is another magic format that we'll do a show on later. Um, similar to Commander, um, it's a, a singleton format, and you have a, a Commander character, a card that you can cast from outside of it. But we'll go into detail on that at another time. Um, and that's what the kind of deck that I wanted to build. Um, so I got red, white, and black. It's very aggressively focused. Um, lots of warrior creatures. Um, so with it, you get a, a seated pack, um, which is just cards from your tribe or your, your clan. Um, so you have one of six, I think it was six different pre-release cards that you could get. Um, I got Mardu Strike Leader, which is a, uh, a creature for three mana that when you attack with it, you put a 2-1 war black warrior creature token into play. Um, which is awesome. And it also had Mardu's new mechanic called Dash. Um, and with Dash is you can pay the Dash cost and you play the creature um, with haste. Uh, uh, and then at the end of turn, it will return to your hand uh, as long as it was on the battlefield. Um, which is really cool because it gives you a chance to quickly strike at opponents um, when they think you might not have a creature. And it also helps protect that creature. 
Uh, so if you just want to get the added effect that it has, so like for that guy, I can pay its dash cost, throw him in real quick, get a guy, and then have him come back to my hand so I don't have to worry about him being killed and still get value. Whereas if he didn't have haste, I'd have to sit him on the battlefield for a turn, wait till it gets back to my next turn to attack, and then possibly get that effect. Um, that would give my opponent a chance to deal with the threat. Uh, there's also other more like aggressive cards. There was a 3-1 creature for 2 mana that had dash um, for 2. So you could just real quick, like, you know, lightning bolt them or, you know, lightning strike them, which I think is the new card that costs 2. It deals 3 damage. Um, so just ways to get quick little shots in at your opponent and have have it difficult because they'll have to they'll know that you have that card but then they also have to like balance their threat management and things like that um and then so for, for the rest of it for sealed deck you get uh, five additional packs you have one t cons of tar care pack and four fate reforged packs in addition to your um your seated pack i uh, have to build a, a minimum 40 card deck using those cards um you know build, uh, including your land uh, you can play more if you'd like but the goal is to try to stay close to 40 cards I had a, a weird predicament where I got stuck with more playable cards than I could possibly play, um, which is sometimes a good problem to have, sometimes a bad problem to have. Uh, it made it really hard to cut my deck down. I had something like 38, I think, cards that I could have potentially used in my deck that I had to whittle down. And I ended up playing a 45-card deck, which is kind of less than ideal. It makes it harder to get certain cards that you want when you want them. Um, but I ended up doing reasonably well. I went four and two for the day, um, which was enough to get prizes, which was awesome. So I got seven, seven additional packs of cards, um, which was cool. I got three, it was three cons and four fate reforged packs. So not too bad, you know, $25 entry fee. And I walked away with 13 booster packs of magic, the gathering $4 a piece is a pretty good deal. Um, so yeah, I had went pretty well. All the matches that I won, I was able to win 2-0. Um, pretty solid aggressive deck with a good bit of removal in it uh, to be able to counter my opponent's threats. And I got lucky enough to open the one big board wipe in the set, uh, which is called Crux of Fate. Uh, when you ca It's a five mana cost sorcery, um, three and two black. When you cast it, you choose either to destroy all dragons or all non-dragons. Uh, and that's kind of where it falls in that in-between state of the dragons of Tar Tarkir and the cons of Tarkir sets where one is going to be very heavily dragon focused and one is focused with not dragons so because this is a transitional set there are dragons in it but more of the creatures are non-dragon creatures so being able to cast it and do non-dragons let me just destroy everything and protect myself when my opponent's got too big of a board state um, so that was very handy to have um i played against uh guy jeskai obzen i played against other mardu um I didn't really come across any Sultai or Teamer players. Uh, it seemed like Jeskai was the larger, uh, the, the one that most people went after. And the reason for that being that the most valuable cards that are in this set are from the Jeskai group. Um, and I'm going to talk about those a little bit in a minute. I'm just going to finish up talking about the pre-release first. Uh, so yeah, I played against those. Um, everyone's like, oh, it's super, you know, a lot of the decks are super aggressive. Mardu's really aggressive. Uh... Sultai was I didn't see it all so it's kind of this weird dredgish deck where you're supposed to put cards into your graveyard and then use them from there but with a smaller deck it can be a little complicated and you don't want to mill yourself out and if you don't get exactly the right cards it makes it kind of tricky to use and limited um, constructed it's more viable uh, deck type uh, teamer focuses on uh, larger creatures so anything with power four or greater um, so that can be a little bit tougher as well it's a little more mid-range and slow than a straight aggro deck um, Abza, uh, Abzan has a lot of really tough creatures, um, which actually was one of my losses. Uh, guy, uh, the, the guy Brian that I was playing against had uh, an Offenza, who is the con of the Abzan clan. She's a 4-4 creature for um, green, white, black, so three mana. Um, that whenever she attacks, she puts a 1-1 counter on another creature you control. And any creatures that would go to, uh, would go to an opponent's graveyard are exiled instead. So it makes it hard for you to recur your stuff. And it's a really big creature. Um, to be able to play early, he was able to play it on turn three, games two and three of our match. Um, so that that was difficult for me to handle. Uh, it's a big creature, it's, uh, and a lot of the removal is focused on dealing damage rather than just destroy target creature. Um, so that was one of my losses. Uh, my other loss came at the the eternal struggle of what they call mana screw. Um, Magic being a variable resource system game. Uh, Sometimes you just don't get the land you need to play, and that's what happened to me. I got stuck on three land in one game and then two land in the other, in the other and just wasn't able to play in the game and lost. 
Um, all the games that I won, I won 2-0, which was awesome, so I had a really solid, strong deck. I had a couple of things called Lightning Shriekers. They're a 5-5 Flying Trample Haste Dragon. At the end of your turn, they shuffle back into your deck. So you play it out real quick, hit your opponent, and then it shuffles away and hides. So it kind of falls into the same uh, thing as the strike mechanic, which is pretty cool. Uh, that just quick threat out of nowhere. They'll go ahead and smack your opponent. Um, and then a lot of other really quick, aggressive creatures, things that work well together, um, and a bunch of removal. Uh, I got a lot of removal. Um, it seems that there's a ton of it in this set, um, which is really good for limited. Um, but it also, it's also tricky, and uh, it's a very creature-heavy format, so removal is definitely necessary. And without a lot of board wipes being around, having lots of small removal is, is very key. Um, so it worked out well for that. Uh, I felt like it was a very good limited experience. I didn't feel like anything was too much more powerful than anything else. There seemed to be a pretty good balance between the different clans. Um, the exception of Sultai feeling a little bit, seeming to be a little bit awkward because I didn't really get any experience playing against it. Um, but Mardu and Jeskai both play really well. Um, the only thing that Jeskai kind of has over Mardu is that Jeskai has more evasion. They have, um, being in blue and white, you get a lot more flying creatures, um, which is key to limited, is having that kind of stuff. Um, but there's a lot of really cool cards in the set beyond just the stuff that you're going to see in limited. Um, so the, the th I'm going to talk about the three most valuable cards that are in the set uh, right now. Um, and those are, first of all, uh, it's Monastery Mentor. Uh, it's, it's a white card. You can see the, the picture right over here. I'm still getting used to that. Um, but it costs two and a white. Uh, it is a mythic rare. Um, it has Prowess, um, which is whenever, this, uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, uh, this creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Uh, and then it also has, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you put a 1-1 one, one white monk creature token into play with prowess. Now, the, uh, the reason this card is so valuable is that um, people are looking at it in Legacy. Um, there is uh, another uh, card... Oh, I'm drawing a blank on the name now. Uh, it's like a little like pyromancer thing, and whenever you cast a, a, a red or a, an instant or sorcery spell, you got a 1-1 one, one elemental creature. Um, so this pairs really well with that. Um, it's the red. The red card's only a, is one in red instead of two in a white. But the, the combined power of these two um, these two creatures being able to put both of them out, and then every time you cast an instant or sorcery spell, getting two additional creatures, particularly with the monks being produced by this, getting pumped for everyone that you play, um, makes them very significant threats. So this is something that we'll probably see being played in Modern, uh, possibly in Legacy. It's probably a little bit too slow for Legacy, um, but definitely expect this card to make a splash in, in the Modern format. Um, it is going for about 30 bucks right now on Star City Games. Um, I believe they're sold out at the moment, but they'll get more in stock, and you can, probably, you can find them at your local game stores as well when they open, when their singles are available for sale uh, next week. Um, so this this is going to be one of those big threats you're going to have to look out for in the in the near future. With that, uh, moving on, um, we have our next card, um, which is also a mythic rare, also in white. Uh, it is the Soulfire Grand Master, uh, and this is the big one that they're saying is going to be legacy card, um, especially for like burn decks. Um, it is a two two creature for one in white. Uh, it has life link, and it also gives all instant and sorcery spells you cast life link. So now that lightning bolt before where it just hit your opponent for three, which was really good, now it gives you three life as well. So it turns into a six-point life swing instead of just a three-point life swing. So for one mana now, lightning bolt is just tremendous with this with uh, this creature on the field. And then the other thing that makes it really solid if you end up in a late-game situation, which I hope probably is not going to happen in Legacy, but um, for two and a, a blue-red... Uh, blue blue red hybrid mana which means you can pay either blue or red for each one of them so for four mana total uh the next time you cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand um as it resolves you return it to your hand instead of putting it into your graveyard um so that could also this that also makes this this card very good for uh like edh format um where you're going to cast big flashy spells and if you ha and you typically have a lot of mana um, so you can use this ability, play your big flashy spell, and then get your big flashy spell back as long as your opponent doesn't counter it. Um, which is kind of insane, especially when you're getting lifelink on that. So if you have big burn spells, um, 
you get that additional effect to it. Um, so that's that's, that's going to be a really strong effect. Uh, this one's going for about twenty five dollars, so it's a little bit lower than the than the Monastery Mentor, but it's also up there in price. Expect again, this is another card that you're going to expect to see probably in standard. I've heard it's going to be good in Legacy, uh, Modern maybe. I don't know how it fits in Modern as well. Um, but the other really big card for this set, moving on, is Ugin the Spirit Dragon, and this is the Planeswalker card for this set. Planeswalkers are usually, you know, big focus. This one I see being a, a modern card, uh, also an EDH card or commander card. Um, it's a high mana cost. It does cost eight, but it's eight colorless, so you can just crank it out with any kind of color. Uh, modern Tron decks are a thing, uh, and this can go right in there. It's not quite as good as Karn, but it's another one of those ones that you can just play it for colorless mana, which makes it a very strong play. Um, it starts off with seven loyalty counters. Uh, you can add two loyalty counters to do three damage to target creature or player, which is a great effect. It lets you deal with threats on the board or just hit your opponent if need be to give, like, give you that little extra push that you need to get the win. Um, it's minus X is a board wipe effect um, where you will exile each uh, permanent on the battlefield with converted mana cost X or less uh, as long as they are one or more colors. So it's not going to hit the artifact stuff out of the way, but it's going to get creatures. Um, it's not going to get lands, which kind of stinks. But if you come against like a token type deck, you can minus zero and just wipe all their tokens off the board, which is really strong. Because a lot of times you just have to worry about getting overwhelmed. Uh, it's a use of your loyalty ability for the turn, but it's a board wipe. So it seems like a really strong effect. Finally, his minus 10 is insane. You gain 7 life, draw 7 cards, and then you can play 7 permanents from your hand to the battlefield without paying their mana cost. So, for EDH, that's just nuts. If you have a way to get him up there, and if you have any of like your doubling effects, like doubling season, uh, you play him, he'll come into play with 14 loyalty counters, you can immediately just minus 10, boom, life total goes up, full handful of good stuff, and then just play out 7 huge things onto the board which is awesome. Uh, uh, he's going for about 30 bucks right now. Uh, uh, magic price has fluctuated, so he might go up, might go down, depending on where he sees play in the future. Um, but right now, he's up there. Uh, so he's rounding out those top three money cards from the set. There's a lot of other cool, non not necessarily expensive cards that are in the set. Uh, the big one that I'm looking forward to, and this goes back to the Tiny Leaders thing, is Alesha, who smiles at death. Uh, she's a legend in the Mardu colors. Uh, she's two and a red to cast. Um, she has first strike, and she's a 3-2 creature, a uh, legendary warrior. Um, and whenever she attacks, you can pay uh, white-black hybrid, white-black hybrid. And if you do, you can return a creature with power two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped and attacking. Um, so it lets you recur creature cards with a low cost and some, or with low power, but since Tiny Leaders is a low mana cost format, everything has to cost mana co uh, three or less, you're probably going to see a lot of those two, you know, two power creatures that are going to be in there, especially ones that have uh, other abilities, comes into play effects that either destroy something or potentially gain life uh, or, or just even boost something else. Uh, so it's a really powerful effect, and she's actually who I want to choose as my commander for a Tiny Leaders deck that I'm thinking about building. Um... But we'll talk more about Tiny Leaders in another show. Uh, so, yeah, so just a quick, so Fate Reforged comes out this Friday. Uh, so check out your local game store uh, for that. Uh, they'll be doing booster draft tournaments, sealed deck tournaments and stuff. So if you want to get your hands on the cards and play in a limited format, it, so it seems like an awesome limited. I'm going to try to play in a draft so I can get a feel for that and talk about that a little bit more in the future as well. Uh, sealed was a, a fun experience, though. Uh, and look for some of these big cards to make splashes in the in the different constructed formats coming up, whether it's Legacy, Modern, Commander, even Standard. Uh, and then next time we'll talk a little bit about Tiny Leaders, um, which is a new format that's up and coming. Uh, we'll go into a little bit more detail about deck construction for that, some of the cool cards that you can use as, com uh, as commanders for that as well. Uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, check out the new set, and hopefully you gain some knowledge from what I talked about. Uh, I'm Spider, this is the Ninja Legion, and thanks for watching Saving Throw.